Hi, I'm Andy Goodenberger with 530 Projects, and today I'm going to show you how I made this RetroPie emulator. So what makes this portable emulator unique is that I developed and designed this system of this USB dovetail mount that allows you to connect different kinds of controllers. So I've got one here for the Super Nintendo. You slide them together, and then you can play Super Nintendo games. So USB joins them together. Or if you want to play just regular Nintendo NES games, plug in the NES controller. Then I didn't stop there either. I put a USB hub in a stand so I can plug in a keyboard or play with a friend. And that mounts the same way too. Just like that. Then it stands up on the table so you can play with your friend. And the screen that I used was a dashboard screen for a car backup system and it came with a couple of different mounts this one's one of the suction cup mounts and it has this type of mounting that it came with so I designed that into the back of the case too so I can mount this guy in a suction cup tighten him down at any angle that I want so looking around the screen here we've got SD card for the Raspberry Pi. We've got two charge ports. We can charge it with micro USB or USB-C. USB output so I can charge my phone. If an on off switch, nothing across the top. We got a speaker grill guard in the center. On this side we've got a headphone jack and a volume wheel and a power button. So this switch over here just hard cuts the power from the Raspberry Pi and that's not good on an SD card so I'm added a power button here and there's an LED behind the plastic that illuminates when I push the button and then the Raspberry Pi starts to do a shutdown sequence so I don't corrupt the SD card. And then on the back I've got some leftover white PLA from a previous print but I've got my dovetail mount with the male USB jack coming out of it. That's where all the magic happens. This is the mount for the dashboard mounts. This button here pushes the button on the inside of the LED board to tell me how much power I have. There's four LEDs in there. And right now I still have full power. Inside of it there's a 10,000 milliamp hour battery. One thing that I don't understand is why the batteries were so expensive. I was looking at getting a Power Boost C from Adafruit and a 2500 milliamp battery from Adafruit and it's going to cost me like 50 bucks where this one comes with all the control circuitry. It's even got a temp sensor on the side of the battery and it's four times as big and it was only $16 for the whole thing. So I went with that route and just opened it up and put it in there. Um, now I'm going to show you how I build the controllers. Cue the build video.
awesome. Alright, I think it's finally time for me to pull the screen cover off. That's satisfying. All right, so now I'm going to show you how the power button works. Let's go over here, see it's playing. Push the button, light blinks. You have to hold it for about six seconds. Light blinks, I think a total of eight times before it starts shutting down. Now it's doing its safe shutdown routine. And then it's safe to completely kill the power switch. So I've been having a lot of fun with this portable emulator lately and I think it's pretty unique and I really like how I can swap out the controls if I'm playing Super Nintendo or if I'm playing uh, regular Nintendo I could do the same thing with like a Sega Genesis controller or a Nintendo 64 controller just have to combine that on the STLs so I'll make all the design files available on my github page there'll be a link in the description I'll also put the STL files for printing on Thingiverse so you can download and print your own. Bill of material will be on GitHub. Thanks for watching. I sure hope you enjoyed the video. Remember to go vote for me on Element 14's Hack Like Heck Challenge. There'll be a link in the description. Please be sure to like, share, and subscribe for more videos. And I'm going to go play some Super Mario.